We do talk a lot about crises going on uh, here in the UK, and there, there, there are a pretty good few, <laughs> you know, some, some, some biggers, some are bigger than others, are biggers, <laughs> Slip, slipping into the old Trump, uh, I don't even know if that's Trump accent anymore, <laughs> but we are seeing sort of numerous crises sort of pop up here and there, and one more quieter crisis that I think is going on, which I think should be given a, a bit of attention now and again, is, of course, the crisis of live music here in the UK. Now, what happened? Why did we get to this crisis in the first place? And, more importantly, with a recent cross-party uh, report written on how the UK government should be helping the UK music industry um, with a ticket levy in, in, in on larger venues to, you know, make sure that there's support then for the smaller venues. It's, it's a good idea, I think, that should be brought in because the UK live music industry is in a very, very precarious situation at the moment for a couple of reasons. So, First of all, we've got to talk about the B word. Yes, Brexit. There is no doubt at all whatsoever that Brexit has had an impact on live music here in the UK, namely for touring purposes. A lot of bands were able to, you know, go off and have European tours and would help build their name, their brand over in Europe. Not only that, but musicians of both sides, either from the UK or Europe, were able to sort of travel to get different jobs and gigs all over the place, be it sort of, you know, your classic, you know, rock uh, venues or even, you know, opera players, you know, your cello, uh, celloists were able to sort of travel all over Europe doing whole circuits of different tours with different orchestras, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that is one area in particular. This has now sort of closed off that route uh, that used to exist. So this is now a problem of certain venues, certain bands now struggling to get expertise of certain instruments into these, having to now really focus solely on the UK talent pool. And of course, when people turn to that talent pool very, very quickly, that pool can dry up very quickly if people are now focusing on that area. But it's not just the actual people who are on stage as well. You've also got to consider technicians. Technicians are the, you know, the guys who run the show almost in a way, do all the backstage stuff, the wiring, the sound checks. You know, they were in the, exactly the same positions as many of these musicians being able to, you know, just go on tour and, and do all these. And once again, You've got a situation where, unfortunately, the UK not big enough to support all these technicians. We've seen a big um, departure of many of these music technicians to uh, live in the EU for that exact reason, that there's just more work in, the, in Europe than there is in the UK to be able to support this many technicians. But also managers who, like, plan all these tours, do all this stuff, you know... There's a massive ecosystem in and around live music, and that is unfortunately being threatened by Brexit because it doesn't bring in or allow these people to to sort of go into sort of a bigger ecosystem and then sort of travel around and develop their skills more and more. So that's one area that has certainly been affecting live music. The second one, obviously, was the pandemic. Um, without a doubt, the pandemic definitely put a lot of pressure on live music venues, especially smaller live music venues. That has been very, very evident. Getting people out into sort of, you know, big crowds. And if you've ever been to like a small music venue, there was one I went to in Mexico not too long ago to see Wheatus. Um, nice little venue, very cramped in, you know, but it, it, it would have made me um, roll back a couple of years that I probably would not have gone during almost the post-COVID eras. And they do see a, a lot of that, people still being a bit nervous, not as much as they used to be, but it is gradually fading of 
you know, going to these types of events. Uh, you know, I've talked about it before about being on the train, that even after I'd stopped wearing my mask, I, I continued to wear it on the train. And even now, uh, I recently went up to, to Aberdeen. I saw one person, well, two or three people actually, wearing their masks on the train. And I was like, should I, should I wear my mask? So, you know, it, it triggers all these. But ultimately, of course, venues did suffer a lot during the pandemic. Many, unfortunately, could not um, withstand the the financial pressures that the pandemic put on them as a, as a venue and found it really hard to continue, again, in that sort of post-pandemic uh, ecosystem. They could not survive. So many small venues just ceased to exist completely post the pandemic. I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of people in the chat from the UK who could say, well, this venue, you know, small music venue closed uh, near me because of the pandemic. So there is very, very much a clear need on this to help support live music in the UK and particularly these small venues. Because without these small venues, there's there's nowhere to play, you know? There's, there's nowhere to sort of learn and hone people's craft. So this is really important. And especially when you, the report expressly says the introduction of a voluntary levy. So this is where it starts. The introduction of of a voluntary levy on tickets for gigs and arenas and stadiums, which would then be used to establish a fund for support for artists and promoters. So that's what they have said, that there should be, a, to begin with, a voluntary levy. Has there been potentially any uptake on this? Well, I currently haven't really seen that too, met, too much yet. But the report did go on to say that if by September, so that's not too long now. If by September there had not been enough financial support for this fund, then the committee suggests the government should step in and introduce a statutory levy. So at that point, you are making it there. So that is the key thing of saying, well, if these big venues aren't going to play ball, well, then we're going to make them play ball. But the other thing they also had to stress is that this cost should then not be passed on to concert goers because it's, it's it's not benefiting them when small venues are, are are closing because who knows those concert goers may one day you know go to see someone in a in a small venue and end up seeing them in a in a in a much larger venue uh, i'm from barnsley i can't tell you how many times i saw like the arctic monkeys pre you know pre pre success <laughs> in many ways um but you know look at the venues they can they can now fill um very very a uh, lot bigger venues uh than they sort of as they sort of built up to so i do think there should be this type of levy we'll be seeing if the government wants to introduce this because the last culture secretary said um when he was talking about and speaking with the industry about this he said the government did not want to introduce a a ticket levy not too surprising because, again, we've got the government who is like, well, we're not going to step in and, and help people. Typical government. But this is something that does need to be done. So we'll keep an eye on this, see if this actually happens or not. But if this does happen, then this will be very, very good, I think, for small venues and something that will help uh, the UK's live music scene in the future. And a long, in like a long term view, it will be very good for the whole industry if this can be done. Even better if this can be done uh, voluntary. If it doesn't, well, then yeah, this is where the government should have to step in. But as of always, let me know what you think down below in the comments. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.